Hello and welcome to the Pioneer Softball Show with head coach Julie Hugner. How are you doing this morning, coach? Good, how are you? I'm doing all right. Um, coming off of the past week against Catawba and Anderson, what was, was there anything different going into practice the next week? I think focus changed a little bit. Um, and obviously, we had two, two tough losses at Catawba and we did not finish both games. And I think we understood that when you have a lead or it's a close game and you have to put it away, you have to put it away. So I think with um, the first Anderson game, we were up with a pretty large lead and we in ended it in six innings, which is huge for defense and pitching that we don't have to go that next top of the seventh and give their team another at-bat. And then I think the same thing applied on New on Saturday on Newberry. Um, it was a 4-4 game. They didn't score in the top of the eighth. And we knew we had to get that run across in the bottom of the eighth so we didn't go to that top of the ninth. Definitely. And um, going right in that Newberry game, I mean, another slow start for us was just kind of like, kind of either we start fast or we start slow, it right. kind of seems. So um, start start slow, 4 nothing going into the six. Is there anything different that you're telling your team besides just... No, I, I don't think we said a whole lot other than just kind of stay the course and keep chipping away. Um, I knew we'd make some adjustments with the pitcher that we saw from game one, and we started to kind of square some balls up. And we had some hit some balls hard earlier in the game. We just really didn't have anything to show for it. So I was confident with our offense that we had a chance. But I think the biggest thing was we gave up the four runs early, but Ivy did a great job to just stay in there, get tough when she had to, and held them scoreless um, to give our offense a chance to catch back up. Right, and I think that, that's been helping her all year is just staying tough. And it seems like the bats always come for her in the end. Mm -hmm. And then um, going into that eighth inning, I mean, just anything, just nothing different. Just keep chipping away at it. Yeah, I, I, well, I go back to the top of the eighth. Um, international tiebreak situation. I put in Ashley Scazzari, who has not thrown a ton. Um, but I thought matchup-wise with the lineup where we were going to face three, four, five, I thought she was our best option, and she came in and got a huge strikeout to a kid that pretty much had our number all day offensively. So I credit a lot of that um, success in that inning to her because she came in, got a big strikeout. We then put Ivy back in with bases loaded to work for ground ball outs. Um, she got a key strikeout in the ground ball out that we wanted to hold them scoreless in the top of the eighth to give our offense that chance to get the go-ahead run, which you see right here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then um, Emily has to kind of, she gets it all started in, with, the, with the single in the fourth. And, yeah. th and then she kind of, she's had a great series overall. Just, um, which you go four for seven, five RBIs, mm -hmm. two doubles, and another home run to make it 23 in her career. Yeah, and I thought Saturday against Newberry, she saw the ball really well. She was attacking her pitch. Um, she knew what side of the plate she wanted to hit. Um, and again, they came inside on her a couple times, and she made them pay, so... And that's what she does as a hitter, definitely. And then, um, then the second game, it's another slow start. They get up five to nothing in the fifth, but we just keep chipping away, which yeah. is what we always do. And then we come through in the sixth. We did, we did. Um, but again, I think it goes back to in that sixth inning, we had great team at bats. We were taking balls out of the zone, working the count, attacking our pitch, um, and that girl had a no hitter going through six innings. We got what we wanted. We got her out of the game to face somebody else that we could probably handle a little bit better. Um, and make, yeah, like I said, made them pay for making the pitching change that they did and did a great job. <laughs> Definitely. And if, if you look at the stats, like we only have four hits, but that just speaks to the team game that we played. And I, yeah, it doesn't. To me, if you have four hits in the right spot, it really doesn't matter. They out hit us, but our right. four hits came um, with runners on. And like I said, it wasn't a solo shot. It was a three run shot. So exactly. Um, if you can get the hits when they matter, that's what's important. Exactly. And then just great momentum coming off of this home win. And then we go, we go on the road to Mars Hill just yesterday. Mm -hmm. And then we actually start out fast in this first game. But then they, they respond very quickly. And then we just... They did. And, and like I said to you last week, I knew that it was going to be a battle going there. Um, they're a really high-powered offense. Um, but I was really pleased to see us have a great warm-up. We came out really confident at the plate. We got to their number one and got her out of the first inning and put up the five-run lead. Um, so I wasn't necessarily overly confident that we had that game, but I was confident that our offense was going to settle in and score runs throughout the course of seven innings. Um, and I think we did do that through three. And then when they started to respond, our offensive approach kind of shifted a little bit. And I think we took a lot of good pitches and chase the pitcher's pitch 
Um, and for our team to be successful, we have to be aggressive at good strikes early in the count. Definitely. And then they're those hard, they're, their ballpark is notorious for being small. Yeah. So it, the ball can got to get out of there. And they kind of got out of there for them. It's hitting at their own ballpark. And we just couldn't couldn't respond in, in either game, actually. Right. Um, yeah. And to me, it's, it's two tough losses. Um, but we have to quickly recover and respond and move our focus to Wingate on Saturday. And again, like I always say, we've got to learn from the mistakes or the failures in which we had to get better for the next game because Wingate doesn't care that we got beat yesterday. Um, no. We've got to, again, move on and continue to focus on the areas that we have to improve upon um, and get better. Definitely. Always getting better every game, every week. But looking to next week on the Pioneer Softball Show with head coach Julie Hubner. Ready, set, go to Johnson City Toyota, where new Tacomas start at $309 a month with zero down. Drive the all-new RAV4 for $209 a month or save over $4,000 on Highlander. See more great deals at johnsoncitytoyota.com. Yeah. Welcome back to the Pioneer Softball Show with head coach Julie Hubner. We got Wingate this weekend, 21 in the nation, but... We're not really worried about that, but they are they are one of the top teams in the conference, so they are very respectable, and we have to be ready for them. Yeah, um, but I think for us, for us to be successful, we have to f focus on our dugout and our team and what we do well um, and really not look at necessarily the opponent. So we got to come in, start off strong on defense. we got to keep the ball down, throw strikes, work ahead in the count, um, and then offensively, we got to be ready to fight in the box and find a way to scratch out runs when the opportunity presents itself. Definitely. And then right after that, you have Young Harris, who's not playing their very best ball yet, but always a worthy opponent. Yeah, they um, competed in a Super Regional last year, and they're very well coached, um, a very sound team. So I'm excited for the challenge because we haven't played them in probably three years just due to weather. Each year it's kind of not worked out for us. Yeah, um, no rain. <laughs> so I'm hopeful we get those games in on Sunday, um, but the weather's not looking great right. on the <laughs> forecast. But um, yeah. Again, it's going to be a tough weekend, but I think this is what you prepare for and what you want. Um, playing tough teams and seeing what you're made of. So Definitely. That is college softball. And then going all the way over the hill, going to play that team out west. Yes. It's always, always disdain. And, and the thing is, um, when I go to like, the player profiles, like when they when they say who their toughest opponent is growing up, is always like a CNU pitcher or like a CNU player or batter. Yeah. I'm just like, this is... They, like, they always get some good players. So. They do. They do. And, again, another sound team who's scrapping for wins in conference play. And um, we've got to be ready to go. They play well at home. So we've got to figure out a way to go and have confidence on the road. And, again, play good defense, attack um, on the mound, and be ready to go offensively. Definitely. And on offense, Hester, 23 career home runs now. She's still been good at the plate. And then Taylor Battle, whenever she gets on base, she's the speed. Just yeah, all speed. And she had a good day yesterday. Um, had a couple base hits, which is um, good to start to see her starting to drive in some runs. She's been coming up in situations where there's runners in scoring position, and she's finding a way to get the ball out of the outfield or get to the ball, get the ball to the outfield um, to push those runs across. So I'm glad to see kind of that piece of her game starting to shape up. But did a good job yesterday. Got on, stole base, um, and she's scoring. Like I said, she's getting on. She's scoring. Definitely. And then you can kind of say the same thing about Alexis Grant. Who, like, if she's not hitting the ball, she's seeing the ball well and she's getting on base. Yeah, the thing for her, she's, I mean, her on base percentage, I think, is leading our team. I think she's getting, I think it's 498 right now. So she's getting on base um, with a lot of walks, hit by pitches. I think with her, though, we need her to step up and start to drive in some runs. Um, she's quite capable, I think, just but finding a pitch and getting comfortable in the box. So, again, doing a really good job to get on base but would love to see the RBI numbers start to increase for her. Definitely. And then Avi, Avi, I talked about it last week, but she is kind of becoming our top pitcher per se, even though we're more by a committee. But she's re becoming really dependable this season, 6-2, and two, I think, on the season. Mm -hmm. Maybe 6-3. and three. Maybe 6-3. Six, six, yeah. six I think I just looked at it. <laughs> but um, I know um, my favorite part of watching us is, like, the chance. Do you have a favorite chant by your dugout? Mm. Not really. Not really. I, mean, really pay to it. I just, again, for our dugout, we need to be enthusiastic every single day. Um, and I thought we did a great job at New with Newberry. Um, and we just got to keep the intensity up for a full doubleheader um, and utilize that as an advantage. But 
when they're on, they're on and it's fun. So I just, I encourage and challenge them to continue to do that. Definitely. Enthusiasm, please bring it to baseball. <laughs> Softball. Bring it to baseball. Well, it, it's coming from softball. Oh, okay. I'm saying okay. we need to bring it to baseball. I got you. See? <laughs> <laughs> On the Pioneer Softball Show with head coach Julie Hubner, I'm PJ Green. For more information about Pioneer Softball, head to TuscalumPioneers.com. And at the end of the day, always roll, knees, roll.